please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Hello and welcome to Chartbusters, the show where we're going to highlight all the buzzing stocks of the day, also get you some expert advice on how you can capitalize and trade. I'm Rachel D'Souza and with me as always, Mangalam Malu. Mangalam, Christmas Eve. But, <laughs> but just look at that, looks like Santa's come here. The Sensex, by the way, uh, is moving well. It's moving towards the 34,000 odd mark. The breadth of the market as well is uh, looking good. We're wearing red ties actually. But, uh, but the market's green. So green, red green and green, both are Christmas colors. And as we speak, yes, uh, uh, the Sen Sensex is moving towards that 34,000 mark. The big question, though, will be 10,500. Is that coming on Absolutely. the Nifty or not? Uh, but uh, the mid-cap index, they, that party continues, right? Yeah, I mean, we're wondering whether or not we can end this year at the high point. Remember, the all-time high is closer towards the 10,500 <laughs> mark, so nothing like it, right? You had such a good year, and maybe, in fact, we can move towards those levels as well. Absolutely, and a lot of stocks moving, a lot of PSU banks moving, but a lot of these ADAG group company stocks are moving too. Reliance Infrastructure, that one is in focus. Remember, yesterday, the company signed, completed a definitive binding agreement with Adani Transmission Limited, 400% stake of its uh, uh, sale of its Mumbai power business. CN NBC TV 18's Kevin Lee, he caught up with Lalit Jalan, the CEO of Reliance Infra, and began by asking him how long the deal closure will take and what are the regulatory approvals which are left. Listen in. Key regulatory approvals are already with us. So we already have the Bombay High Court approval for demerging the Mumbai power business into a separate 100% uh, owned subsidiary. Now the key approval left is our uh, regulator's approval, both for uh, uh, agreeing to the transfer of license as well as the subsequent sale which we don't think is going to last more than the next two to three months so we are very confident that the deal is expected to be consumed by March 31 of this year and what happens to your debt post the deal once you have all the money coming in the total debt at uh, our infra level is 15,000 crores and uh, with the 18,000 odd crores which come in uh, on the consummation of the deal we expect to become debt free and become cash surplus with about 3,000 crores of cash. And what plans do you have for this cash? I know you're setting up projects in Bangladesh. Uh, you're also, you also mentioned that you will bid for EPC projects like the Bandar Varsova Seedink, etc. Where's Reliance Infra going in the next two fiscal years? We have uh, stated our intent of being uh, uh, very uh, lightly levered and also to focus on low capital intensity projects. So our next big focus areas are the construction business. So the Bangladesh project, we our role is the role of a construction company, which we have run on international uh, competitive bidding basis. So we focus on construction and uh, low capital intensity defense business. So these are the future growth areas for Alliance Infrastructure. Uh, EPC will be one of the key businesses and defense. We continue to have our balanced verticals, namely the Delhi power business, uh, we have our roads portfolio, we have our uh, ownership in Reliance Power, we have the Mumbai Metro, and then we have all the arbitration of Delhi Metro and all the other arbitrations, which total to 10,000 crores, uh, which are at various levels of approval. Are there any specific areas that you can look at now and say that these may not be core in the next year or two? No, I, I, I don't think uh, uh, that that is clearly the focus areas for growth will be construction and defense. Okay. Uh, the other businesses are very good businesses, but they will not be for uh, deleveraging. They'll be for creating value for the shareholders. And once this deal is complete, what sort of impact do you see on your revenues and in which quarter will we see that impact coming in? How much will the dent in your revenues be? So uh, if I see uh, our total revenue today is in the range of 26, 27,000 crores. So with this, about 30% of revenue goes down. So we expect that the full effect of this should come in Q1 of next year. Uh, and uh, then the loss of revenue from Bombay distribution will be made up through construction business over the next couple of years. Okay, all right. Keep an eye out on the PSU Banking Index. The Nifty Bank has moved towards the high point of the day. The PSU Banking Index, that's moved higher. Let's pull up a few of those banks. Maybe a union bank should come up for you on the screen. That one, I think, is uh, moving quite well. So let's uh, get the intraday chart of some of these PSU banking stocks. In fact, they're already flashing for you. A lot of them are moving higher. PNB as well is moving higher as we speak. So let's keep an eye out on that one then. But uh, let's get a quick check on the markets. Prakash Gabal joins in. Prakash, uh, the Nifty is moving from strength to strength. I mean, uh, we are expecting a low volume day, not much participation. But um, it seems 10,500 should be here for the taking. 
your take on it and if you had a long position where would you place that crucial stop loss at 10400 basically nigel the trend is still intact up has mm -hmm. not been compromised 10400 very crucial support where is the targets the first technical target that i see is 10515 beyond that 10555 and then even 10600 in the days to come of course i won't be here next week but it looks like these are the days I'm looking at the target. So your question is 10,400? Yes, that's the place to have a stop and run it. Of course, next week we have a holiday, but it's better to take it home. All right, better to take it home. Uh, Prakash, your stock picks. And apart from that, also some of these PSU banks, like uh, we, uh, the ticker team is pointing out as well, we've been speaking about it. They've moved to the high point of the day. Uh, any, any calls there? Yeah, it looks like PSU banks are showing some traction, like Canara Bank shows some initial up move. Possibly we can see an up move in the higher regions or so in the days to come. Bank of India is also showing some resilience, not going down. Perhaps we can see an up move here. Bank of Baroda is looking good. I think, yes, PSU Bank is actually chipping in. All right, Prakash, thanks so much for your take on the markets as well as, uh, you know, we want to get in uh, a couple of picks as well. Uh, if you could uh, tell us uh, what else is looking good. I like two stocks basically. Dabar is looking good. We've seen a good up move today. This up move should continue. The next technical target is around 360, 363 zones in the days to come. Stop below 350. Mm -hmm. And I like Maruti. That's adding to levels closer to 10,000. Maybe a day or two or three, but 10,000 is on the card. Stop below 9,600. Well, it's been a good drive actually for Maruti all through <laughs> this year. You know, the stock is moving towards that 10,000 odd mark. But Prakash, you're telling us you're going to be away next week, so you have a, a good break. Uh, you Thank know. you. Uh, but before we let you go, yesterday you were telling us you're going to watch Tiger Zinda. You liked it? Oh, I loved it. What an amazing <laughs> movie. It was. Superb. Right. One of the best Salman Khan movies I've seen. Oopsie. Oopsie. <laughs> okay, then. Before we get in our conversation, uh, just take a look at DCB Bank. The public sector banks were moving. DCB Bank now has moved to the high point of the day and moving with a fair amount of strength. DCB Bank should come up for you. There we see it, a big spike on that stock. But the big spike has come in for all the Salman Khan fans. And as that has happened, just take a look at PVR. That stock is up about 13% ahead of the release of of the sequel of Ekta Tiger. Tiger Zinda hai releases today with some power pack chase action sequences and definitely the swag filled songs. So we discuss a lot more about this film with Kamal Gyanchandani, the CEO of PVR Pictures. That stock there, it, there you can see it up 12.5% uh, this week itself ahead of that big release. Thanks a lot, Kamal, for joining in. You know, this year has been very bad as far as films are concerned. Apart from Bahubali, no big blockbuster coming in. Uh, the last bastion of hope really for films is Tiger Zinda hai. Do you uh, anticipate that kind of revenue jump up coming in on, on the back of this film? Yes, firstly, a small correction. This year has been a mixed bag. I, I won't call it uh, a very bad year because we recently had Golmal, uh, which turned out to be a big success on Diwali. And that coupled with CK Superstar did, uh, you know, numbers which were much more than what we expected. Coming to Tigers in the high, uh, the advance is unprecedented. The kind of response, excitement that we're seeing in audience is unparalleled. I mean, uh, uh, one reason also could be the fact that for the last 30 odd days, we haven't had any big film apart mm. from Fukre, which also did really well at the box office. Mm. Uh, but all said, the advance is fantastic. The reviews, Early reviews are looking very, very strong. I, I think we have a big blockbuster in our hand. All right. So you're sounding quite confident, uh, Kamal. You know, we look at the bulls and bears. Uh, if it's good, then it's going to be uh, tigers. <laughs> going to be swinging in uh, in your way. But uh, let's get a couple of you know details from you then, uh, Kamal. Uh, what's the expected occupancy? Yeah, you know, you must be having a sense of that, and also pre-booking, you'd be having a sense of that as well. So what's that number? Is it up to your expectations? We've sold roughly 25% of the capacity that we've allocated to Tiger Zinda Hai. 25% mm. uh, uh, of the first three days has already been sold. Uh, and considering that most releases, including Tiger Zinda Hai these days, come with a saturated release plan, as in they tend to go out with large number of screens, large number of shows, mm. uh, selling 25% of your capacity pre-release is is a fantastic achievement. Looking okay. at that, I think Tiger Zinda Hai in the first three days would easily do somewhere around 75% occupancy. 
Okay. Uh, and then thereafter, the weekdays would depend on you know the kind of word of mouth it generates, the kind of uh, uh, leg it shows at the box office. Uh, but 75% uh, occupancy on the weekend is definitely on the cards. All right, 75% occupancy on the weekend, a lot of people coming in, 25% capacity, something that you've sold already. Kamal, these are good uh, indicators coming in from you. Just a word for uh, both the investors and the movie go goers. How much are the tickets uh, priced on an average basis for this film? Last quarter, the average ticket price for PVR was around that 210 rupee mark. Uh, if you could tell us uh, uh, how, how how is that average ticket price in this quarter? Well, the blended average ticket price for this quarter would be around 210, mm. give and take 2 or 3 rupees here or there. Uh, as far as ticket pricing on Tiger Zinda is concerned, it's at par with any other blockbuster ticket pricing. Uh, you can draw parallels with the ticket pricing that we had uh, for Golmal 3. So there has been no increase in ticket uh, prices uh, per se for uh, Tiger Zinda hai. Uh, and average ticket price uh, is, is uh, you know, around the mark that you just mentioned. Mm. You know, Kamal, you're saying Golmal was very good. I mean, that's got a good response. Tiger, definitely Zinda hai, as per what uh, you're <laughs> saying. So, quarter three should be damn mm -hmm. good, yeah? I mean, we're talking mm -hmm. about 210 rupees of average ticket price. I mean, it, it should be a very good quarter. Also, I think enough you've had of Tiger. What about uh, Star Wars? Star Wars, what was the response there? That as well would have done well, isn't it? Well, it did well, but to be honest, Star Wars is a property which is more uh, US-centric as a okay. property, and there are certain international markets which tend to really do well with Star Wars. Mm. Uh, traditionally, Star Wars has not been a big property in India. That said, with every edition that comes out, the property has been growing because of the way Disney has been handling it. You know, the whole yeah. Disney marketing machine, the way they so package Kamal, the film, the way they sort of... So, yeah. Kamal, let's get back then to the quarter three. Quarter three is going to be great, uh, isn't it? You must be having some kind of uh, ballpark uh, footfalls number in mind. And what was quarter two as well? You know, we don't have that uh, really updated with us. If you could help the, us out with the quarter two number. And what should quarter three uh, look like in terms so, of a range? I, I don't have the numbers in front of me. Hmm. Uh, uh, quarter two numbers are published, uh, you know, freely available uh, on various public platforms. Unfortunately, I don't have them in front of me. Mm -hmm. And Q3 numbers is uh, something that we would announce uh, in January. Right. Uh, I would have to request you to wait till then. <laughs> uh, just uh, a mark of caution, uh, Q3 was impacted uh, a bit because of delay in release of Padmavati okay. and the whole uncertainty that came with it. Uh, so there would be some impact of that in Q3. Uh, uh, that said, I mean, kindly wait till January and we would be announcing our numbers then. All right, Kamal, you know, before we let you go, uh, you've been sounding quite optimistic about this film. You gave us the caution with regards to Padmavati as well. You spoke about 210 rupees as your ticket price, but your revenue streams are two others as well, the FNB as well as ad sales. So, uh, two-part question then. One, did you suffer any loss of ads because of the delay of Padmavati? And secondly, for Tigers in the hair, have you sold your ads at a higher rate? And can we see that bump up in the third quarter as well? Yeah, every time a big film shifts or gets delayed or, you know, uh, doesn't do well at the box office, there is some impact on advertising and uh, needless to say, uh, there would be some impact on advertising. But that said, uh, Tiger Zinda is doing exceedingly well as far as advertisers are concerned. Uh, Salman Khan is uh, a very, very popular figure. And of course, that coupled with the film which is produced by Yashraj, Mm -hmm. uh, makes for a property which is very, very marketable. So, yes, absolutely, there would be a big impetus to advertising revenue because of Tigers in Dai. All right. Kamal, thanks so much for stopping by, giving us all those uh, details. I'm going to go and try and watch the film this <laughs> evening, and uh, I'm hoping I like it. More importantly, I'm hoping, uh, you know, my wife likes it, the Tigers. <laughs> <laughs> That's most all important. Right. <laughs> okay. Thanks so much for joining in. Well, uh, let's keep with the theme then. In fact, we have some news that's coming in there. Oopsie. Uptown, the promoter sold close around 3.5% stake in the open market on December 20th. So just keep that stock as well. Uh, let's see if it's doing uh, intraday uh, any kind of a move. Yes, it's moving low, obviously. Promoter is selling. But uh, more interesting, who was the buyer? 
Uh, we'll wait by for uh, those details. But the other stock we're going to be focusing on is Mandana Retail Ventures. as well. That's the other Salman Khan stock, if you have to call it that. The stock is up close to around 15% in this week. We have Mr. Manish Mandana who joins in uh, to give us uh, a broad outlook on what's going on there. Uh, hi, Manish. Thanks so much for joining in. Well, uh, Manish, you know, December is normally a big month for uh, Mandana Retail. Uh, I want to ask you, you know, December last year, 27th is uh, Salman Khan's birthday. Uh, last year, I think the sales were close to around 7 to 8% of your total sales. This year, can you do some number like that? And last year, if I'm not mistaken, you did it roughly around 16 to around 18 crores on a single day. Can you give us those details? Yes, that's true. Actually, uh, 27th December being uh, Salman's birthday, we give a very special offer to all the Being Human and Salman fans. Mm. Uh, and we go on like 50% off across all our channels. So I think we did record sales last year of uh, 18.11 crores in a single day. It which was, okay. which was highest by any brand ever in all the channels, across all the channels. So we are hoping that we, we again make it a big day uh, this year because uh, there have been Being Human loyalists. We've completed five years of the brand and and they, they wait for this uh, special day to come and and we, we see some crazy footfalls in all our stores and all our selling points. Mm. All right, uh, Manish, you know, uh, the stock has moved 16% this month, but if you take a look at the last six, seven months, you know, it's corrected a goodish bit from the record highs of 245 rupees. Uh, that's because your first half performance, the margins front, it's been very, very lackluster. The margins have fallen from 18.5% last year to just about 9%. Do you think the second half you can do better? What kind of margin picture can you end this year with? Well, this year, as we all know, it's been a little tough for uh, retail on the whole. You know, uh, most of the retailers uh, have suffered because of uh, demonetization, followed by GST, and uh, obviously there has been a you know sluggish uh, uh, behavior in the in the retail circles, and. Uh, but, uh, however, I think the second half certainly looks more promising and, and we wish to, you know, compensate for the, for the uh, you know, bad performance that we've had in the first six months compared to last year. So, second half definitely looks more promising. Things have pretty much settled down and uh, obviously this is also a better half of the business because mm. there are festivities followed by wedding season and holiday season. So, obviously the second half uh, always looks much more brighter than the first so we hope that we recover uh, and, and come down to better levels in in the following part all right manish thanks so much for stopping by well you do 18 crores in a single uh, day on december 27th last year and you end up the year with 200 crores that's telling you that day is very very important so this is an important period for you let's hope the second half of the year is good for you particularly for your investors well we need to focus on the markets because we are all set to uh, hit fresh all-time highs yet again. Maybe 10,500 is on the cards in today's trading session. As we speak, the Nifty Bank, that's really come to the party. The big boys, SBI and ICICI Bank, both of them moved to the high point of the day. And one of the big leaders for the market in this year has been Reliance Industries. When that one moves, then in fact, definitely, you get uh, you know a bit of a bump up that we're seeing in the Nifty. Anuj as well joins us uh, in the studio. Anuj, uh, what a day. I mean, we chose to wear red, all three of us in our red ties, and it's green on the screen. But uh, that's the, been the year so far. You buy every dip and make a lot of money. Oh, yes. Uh, and you know what? Uh, Santa Claus is here, right, uh, <laughs> Nigel? Uh, so clearly, the bulls... Uh, look. Uh, this, this is a market which has uh, made a bit of a mockery of the you know uh, the valuations and all but that will happen liquidity driven ra rally and it will keep making new highs and you know this will keep hap happening every time the market is going through 300 400 point correction we think that is this the real deal hmm. and then we find out two weeks later that yes that was the real deal to make money to that's buy that's and uh, and the template of this market is the same, uh, Nigel and Mangalam. You know, we have mid-cap index, which first makes a new high, right. then makes, you know, uh, you know uh, further highs. And after that, the big boys catch up, as Nigel is uh, pointing out, you know, Reliance, ICICI, State Bank, all these stocks doing well. So that's that's really been the template of this market. And signs are that that template should continue at least up until the first quarter of 2018. After that, of course, we'll see, depending on budget, earnings season and all. But today, 
should be all time high and then let's see if we can sustain if the market had to fall it would have fallen by now right. Right. santa claus clearly has come to the party you know you say that when when even underperformers like sun pharma that one suddenly has spiked okay. up to the high point of the day so uh, the laggards are also coming to the party infosys that one too has underperformed all through this year and the it pack really did not do well infosys has to move to the high point of the day it does enjoy a fair amount of weight on the index anuj uh, anything one must be wary of in in such kind of santa claus rally cuz you know everything's moving up you know i i made this point today in the morning as well mangalam that you know right now what you're seeing is a bit of a you know sort of a full toss uh, you know right. you, 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 stock market is like sometimes cricket matches there, you know there are times when you are at the old Perth wicket, you know, there are a lot of bouncers, you know, mm -hmm. seeming track. Uh, mm -hmm. Just got to avoid, you know, losing your wicket. Just got to avoid losing your capital. Once you do that, you know, there comes a time when, you know, bowlers are tired. They are giving you full tosses. The, the you know, the wicket is good to bat. This is a good wicket to bat. And this yeah. is where, you know, you're getting a lot of full tosses. Of course, there are times when you miss out some full tosses and get mm -hmm. out, you know, caught in the boundary as well. That risk is always there. But, uh, you know, if, if the quality of the rally or the mid-cap rally has bothered you over the last one or two years, then... it will keep bothering you it's that's you know not the point here the point is you would always want to be cautious about the kind of stock that you're getting hmm. into that is always the norm in stock market but right now you know it's about greed and fear and right now it's about liquidity it's chasing stocks and that's why you know as long as you have someone else buying your stock when you're selling hmm. you're fine that's right you know i'm not just sticking with that cricket parlance it's a five day cricket match you know you have a absolutely flat wicket the bulls they are batting the bears they are coming in they are running all four <laughs> days you know they're not able to really get uh, uh, get the bulls out it's been that sort of uh, market for us we have moved to the high point of the day well remember you know today we would say that some of those traders are going to go on leave i mean for them they would have missed out on a good uh, on a good <laughs> rally that we are seeing every sort of uh, you know uh, any kind of move is a big miss we moved to 10500 today you know i tell you something good traders are uh, you know p p p participating in this market but the ones who are missing out are the the, the fi's right, <laughs> yeah, right. They have been mis and they, they missed out all year <laughs> they have missed out all year of course uh, and for me personally you know this year has been great in terms of uh, the fact that domestic retail investors have made a lot of money yes. in this market you know this after a long this is this is india's first retail driven bull market the last few bull markets were all Uh, FII driven bull markets this is i think the first time that you have a domestic mutual fund driven or uh, you know DII driven bull market and that explains you know why you know you've seen so many mid caps also hitting new highs because you know that's where the, all that you know just a quick point on infosys i want to make uh, the number of people who came in there to to uh, tender in the buyback was far lower and that's why the acceptance ratio both in retail as well as the hnis was much higher because the you know those coming to tender hmm. telling you that hmm. people believe the longer term story that's yeah. one der derivation because the acceptance ratio was much uh, higher yeah mangal all right so on that note you know you guys were talking a lot about cricket in this uh, domestic home conditions our players going ahead and winning well that's great you know from the bulls and bears who are playing on the field to the commentators <laughs> it's a rap on chartbusters thanks a lot for watching